With me is a fellow Lobo. Love to have Lobos on the show. We had Terrence Mathis about a week ago. By the way, going into the College Hall, Football Hall of Fame. Here's Chicago Bears, Lobo legend, Brian Erlacher with us. Brian, how are you, buddy? Doing good. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate hey, it. Hey, fell, hey talk listen. Talk to a fellow Lobo. That's Not, right, my there man. Aren't many that's of right. Us out there. So you were at the waste management telling me that everybody had it up, right? Yesterday at the, I played in the uh, the pro am and every other hole it was everyone's a lobo, everyone's putting up the woof, lobo. Woof woof woof. I was like, what? There had to be 250 people, and I, you would never see people from UNM out in public. So I so, was so Chris, just so people know, lobo, pack of wolves. That's right. Pack of wolves, baby. That's well, it. I spent about six of my uh, 27 and a half years in southern New Mexico. Oh, is that right? That's yeah, true. I, I was okay. In Lordsburg. Uh, New Mexico, Truth the Consequences, and uh, oh yeah, okay. And I even had, ran the Albuquerque station for a short time. So uh, up there in Lobo Country, but I was down there in Aggie Country and then yeah, everything we else. We don't talk about them. We don't talk about them. We don't talk about them Aggies. Yeah, well, Brian, let's talk real quick about your Bears. Uh, you know, they they got a new coach. Yeah. Hopefully, we can keep him for a while because that seems to be a problem with the Bears is keeping a coach. Yeah. Uh, we have the number one pick. That's not good. Yeah, I uh, just tells you what kind of season you had. But yeah, since since uh, the Bears fired Lovey, it's been uh, it's been tough. You know, I, I, Coach Nagy went to the playoffs two of his four years, and they, they canned him. And then uh, obviously last year, you know, the number one pick is not good. But you know, we have a lot of cap space. Uh, a lot of you know, the thing that, that made me mad about last year is we traded our best player during the middle of the season, Ro Roquan Smith. Right. We, we trade. We drafted him number one, number eight overall pick. He performs well, plays well. And then we trade him. And we but, got rid of another great linebacker a couple years ago, right? For the Bears, who went, uh, who's your outside linebacker who was sack king? Oh, uh, the kid that went to um, yeah. uh, St. Louis, yeah. uh, the LA Rams, uh, yeah. the kid from Georgia, uh, Floyd. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, uh, it's frustrating, you know, um, what happens there. But, you know, hopefully they, they can turn around this year and they get some, spend that money the right way in the offseason and get a good number one pick. I don't know what they're going to do. It's, that's a tough situation to be you in. You would have been, you know, what's interesting about your career is, is, is you're really fit for this game. Because you were a good cover These guy. Days, you know, I was a little bigger. So somebody asked me what it was like now compared to what I play. I said, the linebackers are smaller now. They're all 6'1", 6 6 feet, 220. I was, you know, 6'4", 255. But I could run, fortunately, oh, like, yeah. like the guys that they're playing now. So I was very fortunate in that aspect. But it's a different game now. It's all about speed, getting the ball outside and running. To the, the running game is, except for the... You know the the Eagles. The game's on, the running game's almost obsolete these days. It's not. It doesn't exist that much anymore. So so what are you doing r uh, right now? I mean, uh, you got something going? Yeah. Well, I live here in AZ. Um, my kids are my youngest is 17. He'll graduate next year. My oh middle my daughter's gosh. 18. She graduates this wow. year. Wow. And my oldest is graduating college this year. So once we get them out the door, we'll we'll start figuring out what we want to do. But it's, it's been fun enjoying the last 10 years watching like watching them grow up and do what they want to do and be more of a part of it since I'm, since I'm not playing. Well, what great timing for you to be able to finish right. your career and then be there for the whole thing for your yeah, kids. You know, That's great. Play, it's not that bad. It's not like you're gone all the time. But you're just not, on the weekends during season. You're not there. Yeah. You know, you're gone on the weekends. It's nice to be a part of all that. The last 10 years I've been around for all that. Which Are your now. kids athletes as well? So my two daughters, my, my middle daughter is a skateboarder. Okay. My oldest daughter retired from sports when she was seven. She played soccer. She was a goalie in soccer. And she's like, I'm good. I'm going to retire. Yeah. And my son plays free safety at Chandler High. He has like 15 offers for oh, football. Good. He's pretty awesome. good. Awesome. So, so he's a senior New, this year or just he's finished? He's going to be a senior next year. Oh, good. He has an offer from New Mexico. That's, That's a good thing. Oh, hey, is, that, is that right? Yeah, we got. he's got New Mexico, Penn State, Iowa, Wisconsin, Notre Dame. Cover Washington. guy or a guy who likes to get up and hit somebody? Yes. Both. Both. Oh, good for him. Yeah, he likes contact, which is good. Well, he got that from you probably. Well, I know I got good. my arm from my dad, so yeah, he he it helps. Good, it does help. I agree. For well, sure. listen, uh, you are walking around Radio Row here with somebody I want to talk to. Yes. Uh, Chris Clem is with us in uh, Border Patrol. And first of all, Chris, thank you for your service and everything you're doing. That. It's yeah. da It's dangerous out there. Uh, we're not doing a whole lot to support you guys, and I'm, I'm not talking politics here. I'm just talking truth. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, uh, Board of Trades, we're career. We're not political appointees. And uh, I uh, was the chief the last uh, two years, just retired at the end of the year uh, after 27 and a half years uh, on the border. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. And uh, what we're seeing or what has been shown on the media or what plays out sometimes is not actually what the men and women of the U.S. Board are up against. And um, that's why I, I've partnered with uh, NFL legends like Brian to come down there and thank our agents for what they're doing because it is a, it is a humanitarian issue that we're faced on both sides of the border. And our agents are being pulled away from their primary mission of that border patrol work. And that's where the, that poison is getting into our communities. And so we got to we got to 
We really have to address that. Roman Gabriel show right here with Chris Clem and Brian Murlocker. They're talking about something that's life and death for our kids. And, you know, I, w I want you to fill in my audience because, you know, I do the best I can based on the information that I have. But I want you to fill in some blanks for some of our parents and our kids out there. Uh, first of all, where's where, where, and these are simple questions, but I want my audience to understand this issue because a lot of the people I talk to about fentanyl do not understand what's going on with this because the government isn't educating people about it. So Chris, where is the fentanyl coming from? All right, well, so it's coming in from all over the world into Mexico. The cartels are running that, uh, that, that industry, if you will. Um, and, and what's happening is it's coming in uh, hidden in compartments and, and on people through the lawful ports of entries where the Border Patrol gets involved. In fact, last year there were 700 pounds of fentanyl seized on the southwest border, at least in, in, the, in the Arizona area. Um, about half of that was at the ports by our port officers. The other half was by Border Patrol because these people were backpacking it and running it through the desert. Now, the, the amount of fentanyl, like a grain of salt, is enough to be lethal. 700 pounds of fentanyl is enough to kill everybody in Arizona 21 times. And so it doesn't take much when that stuff's in the wrong hands. And so I would advise parents, I would advise anybody that's listening, do not take anything from strangers. I mean, that sounds like something we learned in kindergarten. But in today's world, I mean, look, there are 100, 150 deaths a day from fentanyl. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching The Roman Gabriel Show. For more exclusive video and audio archives, go to our official website at romangabrielshow.com.